Behold, it's Natalia and Raisin, the licking couch goblin. What do I taste like, Raisin? So I want to quickly address this whole bringing back the dire wolf from extinction story. As a biological anthropologist, I can tell you they did not bring back the dire wolf. So I've done a lot of de-extinction podcasts in the past for Star Talk about bringing back, say, the woolly mammoth. And the thing is, folks, they'll never be able to bring back a species like that unless they can completely recreate its genome, which is highly unlikely because oftentimes ancient DNA is degraded. It's been around the block. So this whole idea about de-extinction is like, for instance, taking the woolly mammoth and finding the closest genetic relative to it, the Asian elephant, and then taking traits that would make the Asian elephant more mammoth-like and splicing them in using gene editing. So you're not going to get a woolly mammoth. You're going to get an Asian elephant that kind of looks like a woolly mammoth, which is cool, but also... There's so many species that need help. So in the case of the dire wolf, what they did is they took a 13,000-year-old tooth and a 72,000-year-old inner ear bone and extracted ancient DNA from them. Then they identify the traits that would make a gray wolf more dire wolf-like, and they take those traits and they use CRISPR-Cas9 technology to splice them in, create an embryo, and implant it into a gray wolf mama. Then they let the magic happen. And you get three genetically modified gray wolf pups not new dire wolves. Sure, they may look like dire wolves, but that doesn't mean they're dire wolves. It's disappointing, right, Raisin? Mm. Right. This also begs the question, why are we trying to bring back a species that went extinct during the Ice Age during a time of global warming? Huh? These are some of the ethical concerns. Another thing to consider is how these new genetically modified species are going to interact with current ecosystems. Like, what if they wreak total havoc? Oh, uh, that could be jurassically bad. More ethical concerns. Also, we could be using this technology to help save species that are on the brink of extinction rather than bringing back species from extinction, which we can't really do. Also, we have to take in consideration the animals that are being used to gestate these embryos. More ethical concerns. But I do have good news. You want to see some dire wolves? Then get your sweet peachy keister to Los Angeles, California, to the La Brea Tar Pits Page Museum. They have a wall of 404 dire wolf skulls. Sure, they're dead, but aren't they cool? They have found over 4,000 dire wolf skeletal remains around the La Brea Tar Pits, and that's because big megafauna like Colombian mammoths and giant ground sloths would get stuck in the tar, cry out in agony, and then all the carnivores would descend and get stuck in the tar, too. That sounds like a dire situation. Real pain in the asphalt. Oh, and another cool thing about dire wolves. In recent years, scientists have discovered that they are pretty distantly related from gray wolves. They have a common ancestor 5.7 million years ago. That's about the same amount of time that humans diverged from a common ancestor with chimps. And dire wolves are more closely related to African jackals than the gray wolf. Science is just so doggone interesting. Right, Raisin? And if this subject piques your interest, I've got some good news because next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific time, I'm interviewing my friend and colleague, Dr. Adam Johnson, who's an environmental anthropologist, an expert in this subject, and he's actually working to reintroduce wolves into Mexico. Yo quiero un wolf pack. Be sure to follow his blog, Anthropology 365, and read his last article. It is so good. Be sure to tune in Tuesday and bring your questions. My little wolf and I will be there.